Yeah, so first just like kind of, hey, blues songs go like one, go one under it, two frets over. Like if you know Wild Thing, it's like. So those are the, they're like, you know, it's like this one under it, two over. Those are the notes we expect in blues changes. But instead, he's like doing this just like G, then A minor, G, then F. So it calls for more of a minor scale approach, which was this thing with all these other, other notes. But really what he did is he ended up using the blues scale. Which is the, so point is is like the reason all these other notes are working um, is either because of how the chord changes are, or that he bends a non-scale tone to sound like a note that would work. Where if we didn't bend it, it would sound like a clam. Um, but anyway, so cool. Um, we've got our rhythm part, um, which I forgot. I'll do the rhythm now. So be sure not to anchor. Just drum. And the whole song you want to just be a little fist. All right, so. During the intro, which is a good way to warm up, excuse me, he just goes. Lay out. So that would be a good thing to practice and go even slower than I did. So there's part one, just do the intro. Something we talked about today was the half and half chord, like you're doing F as this, then that. Make yourself do it as that, and then this, and then you'll meet yourself in the middle. So before you even try playing this, just be like, G to F, until your brain's like, I can actually do that. Yeah, just go over the changes, be sure you can go. So there's exercise one. Exercise two is playing it without the chicka chickas. And then about exactly two minutes into your video, we start doing the actual thing, which he's doing during the verse, adding the chicka chickas. So we go. And I'm doing that with my ring, my ring finger primarily, because I'm on my way back to this shape. So it's like. So a lot of chord progressions, we get, we get the open strum here, we don't, we just have to go straight to it. Uh, like you can go, the last one was actually, but in this song we don't get that, we have, we have to change it pretty fast. So accordingly I'd suggest like here's a starting tempo, after you're already good at the chord changes for the chicka chicka one, like be like, Specify that I want you to work in sections, that this is section one. Just getting to there, like the song ends there. And then you don't have to play the whole thing to work on. Like you're making your way back to the beginning. So that's our going over the dance steps part. Is and the song ends there, getting this to this to this to this, and then again, right, you know, ending on the first thing that we do, so section one, section two, I'm getting back to the beginning of it, so we're simulating all the changes in there. Great, so there it is. And this is the same thing in like chicka chicka or like you know tends to be down up down up so down 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 up down awesome so like four minutes and 20 seconds into the recording we start talking about the intro riff that he does um structurally like a minor pentatonic like we were talking about uh just really quick when we're bending on this note right here we use our you know these two fingers same thing when we're here we just get that finger to like travel with it like they're attached to each other you know cool so then um we introduce down at the bottom of the page the a blue scale which is just adding a flatted fifth power chord 
this do re mi fa sol one two three four five. So that's called a fifth. So a fly fifth is, and that's the devil's interval. It's also called a tritone, but not important to remember that. Also, it's hard to describe why. It doesn't have much to do with the number three. Um, cool. So there. So we're going. Then the strings normal. Then we've got. And this is where we introduce the concept of octaves. You know that like it's like a, not a power chord, but the string beneath it. That's two of the same note. Two of the same note. Um, so here that note that was here. That's the only other note we're adding. The two high strings are the, are the same as they were. So yeah. Depending on what we're playing, sometimes you'll use your pinky here, but usually when we're doing blues licks, you use your ring finger because then it puts right into it to do that type of shit. So just stop now and work on that blue scale, just going up and down it or whatever. Or just up it, up it, come back down it. Um, but actually, we noticed that what he's doing in this song is he goes to that same note right there. That, that note that's our new on the third string is the same as going index finger and backing up one fret. Um, so yeah, he's featuring that in the second half, um, which is what is really interesting. And then when he goes, he's bending the sixth fret, which is like the illest sounding note we could hit as a long tone if I'm like, I'm playing the blues. That one would just be like, oh, because that's the jaws interval. So there's, you know, there's him bending a scale tone where it wouldn't work ever to play it as a long tone. Whereas these ones, if I just went off on that, we're so far, we're so far so good, but this one, we have to bend. Um, so just went over the structure there. First lick is just pentatonic. Two fret slides, unless we say otherwise. So, and that's down, up, make a fist, and then, what is it? Yeah. Three of those. If you can't make yourself do it like that, it's kind of okay if you bunch your hand up on this one. Um, anyway, so there we are. Excuse me. And then we do that same bend and strike. Sounds like one note. And then we get our first. This not a non-scale tone. Not the, not this one. Not this one. But this one. This one. The sixth fret. So he actually uses all three of those notes in this. So we like fourth fret, fifth fret, sixth fret, all on the second string, which is unusual. Uh, here's our blues box, and getting all of those to work in there. Cool. So anyway, just we were going. So there's a, we just, you know, we go. And then it's like we start on that note, and then just slide to it. But more than anything, you just want to think of it as I'm using a slide to ornament this note, not I was at the sixth fret. And he does a lot of vibrato on that. So second phrasing. And so far we're... Excuse me. So we actually can't bunch our hand up, that's right, because it's... So I'd get really good at that part before we move on, and we're at like 8.45. And then he cruises back to this structure really. Like I've got my middle finger on the, this note right here that we usually use our index finger for. And we're going, and that's that same new blues note we added. And he's using the other note he added right there, which is not going you know, five, eight, or five, seven, or five, six, which is like, Stuff, but then he's adding blue scale stuff too. Um, anyway, what we're actually doing goes. To... So if, once we get past, it's really just don't bend, bend, don't bend, bend, all the same fret, same finger. So there's that one, and you know. We've done a couple less of those, so it's always implied that I mean now stop work on that, now stop work on that after each trip. So yeah, hit pause after all of these and work on them. So that's us so far, um, but let's think of this as a new section. This 
and then he starts with the same exact bend, but it's one of those. And there we are. So so far. There we go. Hammer on pull off, and then on the first string. So it's all just. And this note, that's the one though, the very last one that would sound like crap. We didn't. And that's bending it up to exactly the normal note. So this. Is like going, um. You know. Excuse me. concept of him using non-scale tones, so that's why it works. It wouldn't generally work to be like... I feel like, feel like this is my song in A, let's play it loose. It's not going to really sound right. Um, cool, so there we are. Whole thing. This will be easier, but we can totally do it on an acoustic. And there is a video.